Hi, Stephen Hand from Staccata in Hobart. A little while ago, I did a video on the basics of Joseph Sweetman's rapier. And I want to look today at something that Sweetman said in his School of the Noble and Worthy Science of Defence, which was published in 1617. He made what some people have said is a fairly extraordinary claim about how far you can lunge with a rapier. What he says is, to observe distance, by which is meant that thou shouldest stand so far off from thine enemy as thou canst, but reach him when thou dost step forth with thy blow or thrust, and thy foremost foot and hand must go together, and which distance may be twelve foot with a rapier or with a sword four foot long. And yet thy best foot, which should be the hindermost foot of a right hand of men, should be moored fast and keep his standing without moving an inch, for then he will be the readier to draw back thy forefoot and body into the right place of distance again, for thou must do upon every charge whether thou hit thy enemy or not. Whereas, if in stepping forth with thy forefoot, when thou doth, dost charge thy enemy either with blow or thrust, thou suffer thy hinder foot to drag in after the other, then thou breakest thy distance, and thereby endangerest thy, thy body. There is no better way to get the true observation of distance, but by often practice, either with thy friend, or else privately in a chamber against a wall, standing twelve foot off with thy hindermost foot, and thy weapon four foot long, or thereabout, for a good garden distance, are the main and principal points of all. So, what is Sweetnam telling us there? Well, he's telling us that with a four foot long rapier, this is a four foot long rapier, it's exactly 48 inches, has a 42 inch blade, very typical of the time. This is an English rapier that dates, it's a perfect replica of, of one that dates from 1615 and is held in the Royal Armouries. Uh, when we made this, we got um, we got information from the guys in the armoury sent us really detailed pictures. This was made nearly 20 years ago now by Craig Sitch of Manning Imperial Armouries. It's a really beautiful piece, really accurate replica. Uh, so Sweetman is saying that when you make a lunge, the distance from your hind foot to the point of your rapier is going to be, should be 12 feet. So what we're going to do today is we're going to test that out. Now some people have suggested that because that's such a large distance that some people have suggested that the foot was shorter in Sweetman's day. Now apart from the fact that if the foot was shorter well that would make the rapier shorter and this is actually a pretty typical length rapier. Um, rapiers were about this long, uh, about four modern feet long. I've done a bit of research into lengths of the foot and it seems like the modern foot can be dated back to at least the 12th century. In the early 12th century, there was a length inscribed on St Paul's Church in London, which, oddly enough, was called St Paul's Foot, and was pretty much identical to the modern English foot. And there's really, there's no evidence, certainly, that I've seen that the foot changed in any way, in any appreciable way after that. So it would seem that a foot is a foot, and that 12 feet means 12 modern feet. Could the rapier have been longer? Well, Sweetnam says that the rapier should be four foot or thereabouts, but if we actually look at his illustrations, we see that the length of the rapier in the illustrations, compared to the height of the individuals, the rapiers are 87% of the height of the individuals. And that comes to a, a, that gives you a fairly extraordinary length. This is a four foot rapier. On my frame, I'm five foot nine inches, 175 centimetres tall. That gives me a five foot rapier. So somewhere about there. Someone who's really tall could have a five foot six rapier, a five and a half foot rapier. Now I've never seen a rapier that long. I've seen rapiers maybe this long, but there or there, no. I haven't seen them, and I shudder to think how heavy they'd actually be. Um, this, this weighs enough, um, but a five and a half foot rapier, no thank you. 
but a few extra inches, certainly, particularly for a, a tall man. So let's get on to actually testing it. Let's have a look, firstly, at, at how Sweetenham uh, holds the rapier and how he lunges. So Sweetenham says about how you should hold the rapier. Now, I'm reading out from the true guard for the single rapier. Uh, he discusses everything except what he's already, he doesn't discuss where you should put your feet. He's already said in the section on rapier and dagger that you should have your feet, the heel of thy right foot should join close to the middle joint of the great toe of thy left foot. So something like this, which is quite similar to a lot of stances we see in Salvatore Fabris's manual. Keep your rapier point, something sloping towards your left shoulder, and your rapier hand, so low as your girdle stead, or lower, and bear out your rapier hand at arm's end, so far as you can, and keep the point of your rapier, something leaning towards your enemy, keeping your rapier always on the outside of your enemy's rapier, but not joining with him, for you must observe a true distance at all weapons, that is to say, three feet betwixt the points of your weapons and twelve foot distance with your forefoot from your enemy's forefoot. You must be careful that you frame your guard right. Now you must not be the rope your hand wide to the right side of your body, but right forward from your girdle stead as before said. So with me, I drop the body weight and refuse the, the midsection and have my point out like that. I usually have the hand forward for parrying. Often when I lunge, I have the hand back to counterbalance me, particularly when I'm trying to do a really long sweeten style lunge. So let's examine um, how far I can lunge and how far other people can lunge. What we have behind us, we've laid out uh, 12 feet or 3.65 metres thereabouts uh, in modern measurements uh, and the, that 12 feet is between the two arming swords you see behind me. So let's see what I can do. Now, firstly a couple of peculiarities about the lunge. Sweet doesn't tell you very much about how he lunges but if he has his foot in this orientation, it's very similar to the orientation Capo Ferro has his foot when he lunges. And Capo Ferro very distinctly shows a pivoting of the foot as he lunges, which allows you to get your knee further forward beyond your front toe, as was typical in a lot of lunges. Uh, and I'm very grateful to Guy Windsor for pointing out all the intricacies of Capo Ferro's lunge. And I think Sweetman did. Uh, his lunge was quite similar in a lot of ways. So when I lunge, it's something like that. And I, I haven't dragged my foot, but I pivot, so I pivot on my back foot, and that allows my knee to go over my front foot. Now, if I can get a measuring guide before my knees get out to see what I'm getting. All right, so where are we? Three. Three metres, just over, uh, just over three metres, so about 0.6 metres, that's about two feet short, so that's a little over 10 feet. Let's see if I really put an effort in what I can get there. Oh, that wasn't a good lunge. Any, any further? Okay, about 3.15. Meters, so we went about another 15 centimetres or about another half a foot. So we're still about, we're still about 45 centimetres or about a foot and a half short. Now I'm not a particularly tall man. So as they say in the classics, here's one I prepared earlier. Now, this is Bennett. Bennett, I've chosen Bennett because he's the tallest man in my cell. Bennett does not do rapier fencing. He has not learned rapier fencing. He learned how to do Sweetman's lunge about 15 minutes ago. So if you're one of these people who looks at YouTube videos and wants to criticise the technique, don't. He only just learned it. So just don't. Alright, so if Bennett, I'll go up to the use of measuring guy. Ooh, we're getting 
close. So yep, we can recover the one. That's 3.4 metres. We're only 20 centimetres short. That's that's a little under a foot. Okay, so let's see if you can let's see if you can you want to try again and try for a really extravagant. Yep, really extravagant lunge. Yep, a little bit further, just under 3.5, only about 10, 10 or 12 centimetres short. So, assuming that, thanks Bennett, that, that was great. All right, assuming that we've got somebody who's reasonably tall and is well practiced in this art and is used to doing deep lunges, Sweeten tells us to go away and practice. Um, I think 12 feet is not an extravagant thing to ask people to do. Maybe with me, I'm a little bloke, it's maybe a little bit a little bit too far. But with somebody who's tall, 6'4, has a rapier that's maybe a few more inches than this, 12 feet does seem to be attainable. So Sweetenham's 12 foot lunge, fact or fantasy, it would seem to be fact. Thanks for watching.